Good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna do a quick, uh, just a uh, demonstration of how I keep my fountains clean. Um, I've got a lot of questions. How do you keep them clear? You don't. Um, if they're sitting out in full sun like this one is, they're gonna grow scads of algae. That's just a fact. Nothing's gonna stop it. Not these um, pond algae preventers. They don't work. Um, they do keep it from getting on the side so it floats around in, in the fountain but they don't prevent it. So, um, but the real reason is, is that I got the, the brand hidden because I'm not trying to blast anybody, but I was given this um, and I actually told a couple of people who had asked me what I had been using and I had been using this. But um, I decided to read the back of the bottle because this was given to me and I just kind of took it on faith when I got the fountain that this was safe for fish and wildlife and birds and everything. But then, um, a few weeks ago, I turned it over and read harmful if swallowed and absorbed through the skin causes moderate eye irritation, avoid contact with skin, eyes or clothing, wait, wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, drinking, chewing gum, using tobacco or using the toilet. Note this product, which almost everything does, contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. Does that sound safe? That doesn't sound safe to me. Um, so I'm not gonna be using this anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna throw it out. Um, my grandchildren have been playing in this. So um, definitely when you get some of these pond things, if you do put your hands in it, in any way interact with it, our kids, our grandkids play with this. Um, and I had no idea. I didn't use it a lot though. Um, so I'll show you what I, I've been doing. Okay. So basically this summer has been the easiest summer with, because now I have two fountains. So I had to find something that actually, um, works where the maintenance is low and I can get it done quickly because I have a jungle to take care of. So I don't really have time to be dedicating a lot of time to scrubbing. Although I will, you know, maybe run a video of me scrubbing when I do do that. Maybe every, maybe twice a season, I'll give it a good scrubbing. But the easiest thing to do is get it when it starts. So basically I clean it out. Well, I didn't clean this. This is, this is what I'm going to show you once a week. I put a cap full of hydrogen peroxide. You just get it at obviously CVS or any drugstore. I put a cap full, just fill the cap and I put it in there once a week. That seems to be plenty. Um, this in all my research, um, we brush our teeth with it. We seems to be perfectly safe at that dilution. And remember, you, this kind of fountain, you have to fill with water every day. So it's really staying diluted. But what I found about this is it also keeps the algae from going on the sides. So I did that, I guess, for three weeks. Then I started to see some actual algae growing in the water. It was floating just like it does with the, the algae sides for the ponds. So I dropped the water. I took both the plugs out, one plug there, one plug there just drop the water. I did no scrubbing. And then you see the sun, that's your best bleach. So you let it sit all day long and you let it sit until it completely dries. And the sun is going to kill off all your algae. Put your plugs back in, fill it back up. It's that simple. I'll show you. I just dropped this, the water, I guess last night it's 120 in the afternoon so the sun's been on it since this morning but only half a day and there's absolutely no slime and no signs of algae at all in it and i'll give you a close-up and i'll show you that there's no green growth on it at all there's still mild showing up in here and all you have to do is get something i'll have to get something i just didn't and 
get all the water out of it and the sun will take care of that within a couple hours. It just burns it right off. So that is nature makes the best bleach and it's your sun. So use it to your advantage and I've done absolutely no scrubbing on it. And that happens, I guess it's been about three weeks, putting one capful of pro hydrogen peroxide in it once a week. All right, I'll show you the other one. You can also use a blower to blow them out like the remaining water. <laughs> Okay, so this is the other fountain. And you can see the water is starting to kind of get cloudy. So you can drop the water at this point. This has also been um, about three weeks um, since I cleaned it out. I had gotten a bunch of mulch in it when I mulched around it because this is our new fountain. And so um, the increased nitrogen did grow some algae. I am experimenting and trying some water lettuce because I've heard wil water lilies will clear your water. Um, just like the palm plants keep your pond clear, even a stagnant pond. If you have the right palm plants in there, the, the pond will stay clear and it'll, it'll stay um, odor free. Our pond has been there since, gosh, I guess, the third week of June or earlier and it's clear from top to bottom you can see the bottom um, we have almost frogs two frogs in there um, there are still froglets but they just grew their their front legs um, and that water is crystal clear and there's absolutely no odor and this is it's a hundred degrees today uh, the plants are maintaining it and filtering it the water and all the the horrible case scenarios that everybody was telling me I was going to have did not happen. So let me, let me show you here. You can kind of see that it's kind of starting, hopefully you can see that, getting a bit cloudy and, and a little bit darker looking. But right now I can't see any actual algae, but that is the beginning of algae growth. So I've been putting the cap pool of peroxide in. The plants seem fine so at this point that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let it go another week um, I could drop the water at this point and but there's 50 gallons in there so that seems wasteful to me aesthetically it's not bothering me at this point so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the capsule of peroxide and put it back in well actually I'm gonna put two capsules in a in a 50 gallon this size the other one is half the size it couldn't be more than 25 gallons in it. So I won't tend to drop the water as, as quickly because, you know, 50 gallons, that's wasteful. So I'm trying not to, to do that. Okay, so this is my second taping. And I will try to put up little clips of the first taping. What I, I never think of it when I'm back here because we don't have trouble talking over the fountain. But when you're on tape, the fountain override your voice and the microphone picks up the fountain much more than it does our voices i guess it's just louder so um i when i was editing i didn't like that competition so i'll put that up so this is our our fountain our, our new fountain that's in predominant shade and um it seems to grow algae at a similar rate to the other one um, in the full sun. So I'm not exactly sure how much the shade is helping. Uh, now, if we allowed this, if we got this water lettuce in early in the season, if we had had it, but we didn't have it, I think it would have shaded it out enough at the bottom that it would really help a lot um, because I know the pond is not, um, the pond is crystal clear. So those plants are keeping that crystal clear. So um, I'm just not sure how much you're gonna like the moving water um, long-term. So we'll see how that goes. These are annual, so it's not a big deal if um, to experiment with them here. Yeah, so basically, um, basic, about every three weeks, doing a light scouring. Uh, the water gets really cloudy 
initially. And then I just put the two capsules of peroxide. I'm not exactly sure how that small amount seems to be helping, but it is. Um, it seems to be doing exactly what the algaecite was doing. It does not stop the growth of algae, but what it does is it stops it from clinging to, it doesn't seem to cling to the sides as much on either fountain. So it's really made a lot easier. It's a lot easier to kind of um, drop your water, let it solarize what little bit of um, slimy feeling that you have on the sides. I, it only took a few hours to make that, basically bleach that out. That's how little was on it. And um, this one, it probably would take all day if I was going to solarize it uh, because we only get 40 minutes of sun on it. So, but there is still some UV light getting on it and stuff like that. Um, if it was, it doesn't at all feel slimy at all. Not at all. So, the little bit of cloudiness, the little bit of, um, to me, dark spots kind of are giving it a little more character. But just after a couple hours of having the, um, even when I stir it up, it's clearer already after a few hours with the peroxide in it. So, um, and it's not stirring up as much. So it's doing something quickly um, when you put it in. It dissipates fast, so um, it's not a long-term worry. And if you did worry, it works so fast, you could take your hose and dilute it right away if you're worried about the birds. Um, yeah, so that little bit of peroxide seems to be working for us. 3% peroxide, so Hopefully um, these tips, just as soon as you start seeing it actually floating, the algae, do something about it. Don't let it keep going. Um, if you're growing it faster, try the peroxide. Um, and again, try getting a toilet bowl cleaner, hiding it and just keeping it off your sides because then you don't have so much of a, um, a scrubbing issue. Yeah, so I hope that you got a couple tips and just answering your questions of how we maintain our fountains. Um, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Okay, so two hours later after putting the peroxide in, hopefully you can see the water is much clearer.